hit that like button just like Tyson. We got a father that was accused of killing his girlfriend and his daughter and attempting to kill his son. But the son survived. The Riverview man accused of killing his girlfriend and young daughter and attempting to kill his son in 2018 is currently defending himself in front of a jury. ABC Action News reporter Heather Lee has been in court all day for us. And we want to warn you that some of the audio recordings presented today can be disturbing to hear. She called 911. The state began their opening statements by playing the 911 call Kenyatta Barron made just before midnight. During the call, you can hear Barron screaming and pleading for her life. The state says Ronnie O'Neill III hunted her down as she hid from him in a bedroom closet. They eventually ended up at their neighbor's front door, where Assistant State Attorney Scott Harmon says O'Neill beat her to death with a shotgun. That's the barrel, the tip of the barrel with a dent in it. On her head, on this young woman's face. Harmon says he then killed his daughter, who had autism and couldn't speak. She couldn't beg for her life, like Kenyatta Barron had been able to do. The evidence will show that Ron Nivy was unable to say, Daddy, stop. Please, Daddy. Please, Daddy, stop. Stop. The state says O'Neill then set out to kill his son, stabbing him multiple times before setting the house on fire. When deputies arrived, the state says O'Neill's son came out of the garage holding himself before collapsing in the front yard. The evidence is going to show I love my children. And the evidence is going to prove to you that this whole entire case has been tampered with and fabricated. O'Neill III has been defending himself. He seemed extremely agitated, yelling at the jury throughout his nearly 30 minute long opening statement. She threatened to kill me with a knife just a few weeks, just a few weeks before the incident. And she was angry about my relationship with my other child's mom. He says his son is unreliable when it comes to the, quote, actual facts of the case because he suffers from PTSD and that he has been coached on his responses. That boy survived and is expected to testify against his father at some point during this case. I want to ask the sister, does that look like the face of an innocent man? I cannot say yes and I cannot say no. Because do I look like the face of an innocent woman? <laughs> and I say that because I've been in a toxic relationship. You know, I've tried to run over my husband, my ex-husband a couple of times. <laughs> oh, sucks. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm, you know, and that's the justice system as we have it. You know, I don't know what those people will go through. So I can't condemn this man to hell and I can't send him to jail forever because I don't know what their relationship consisted of. He is not painting a picture to me of a man who does not need to go to jail, you know, <laughs> because here I am admitting my wrong. I know what I did as a person, as a human that was not right. Now him in this situation, like I, I can't even watching him and listening to the testimony it's a lot and you know a lot of our men and women have been sentenced to life in prison for things that were potentially up and down so you know it's i can't say those are situations that right. i have to be jurors on because these are things that you cannot judge because you were not there you did not know the situation so i can't even say <laughs> All right, um, that sounds that sounds great right there. You know, uh, I understand where you're coming from when you say that. Now, I'm going to ask this brother that's currently locked up in jail. Did this guy do the right thing by choosing to represent himself? Now, he's been locked up for three years and has had several public defenders. What do you think, Bob? I mean, you know, nobody knows your case how you know your case. You know what I'm saying? Nobody knows what actually took place like you do. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, in some situations, it's good to represent yourself. In some situations, it's not.
In this situation, mm, I don't think he should have represented himself. I'm going to be real. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, you got your own son saying, you stabbed me. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's heavy. You know what I'm saying? It's real heavy. I mean, I think he. I don't think he should be representing himself. I don't. I don't. Cause he too. He too emotionally attached to it. You know what I'm saying? I just saw my dad holding a shotgun, and my mom like, and mom screaming at him. That little boy testifying at his father's murder trial. He's the son of Ronnie O'Neill. His father on trial for the murder of the boy's mother and sister and also for trying to kill Ronnie, allegedly. Now, because he's representing himself, this creates the unusual scenario of the father cross-examining, questioning his own son. The All right, I'm gonna stop it right there because we don't need to hear no more of that particular situation. All right, so I'm um, Brother Fatir Mohammed. Yes, sir. Ronnie O'Neill, that's his name. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a killer to me. Sounds like a killer to me. Ronnie O'Neill. All right, um, his son testified against him. Yes, sir. And you heard what he said in the other video where he said he loved his kids, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you believe the son could be manipulated by somebody to say that his father did this? Yes, of course. Uh, and I agree with, with, with both of the panelists, uh, the sister and the brother, you know, uh, during the heat of the moment, you know, you, you begin to, to bow down to the lower self of your heat of, of, of an argument with your spouse or girlfriend. And we're taught in the nation of Islam, as you probably heard my wife yelling at me just earlier. <laughs> but yeah. uh, I don't, I don't that's see... A, that's another video. <laughs> It's not. It's, it's not a video. I wish it was a video so you can see the the positivity of the God that we ignore. That be eventually the self accusing spirit of that of that of that woman will come back and apologize because I don't feed into that madness. So I rise above emotion into the thinking of God, and you'll always be the winner. I don't care. You might look like a like a, a fool or a weak person as a man or a woman, but if you don't feed into the madness, you'll always be the winner. All right, so Brother Bon Colion, we heard the testimony of his son. Does it make it weird that the father will have to cross-examine the son? Is this genius? Is that man a genius? Oh, no, he's not. No, he's not a genius. You know what I'm saying? Because, like I say, he's too emotionally attached to it. You know what I'm saying? So there's no telling how he's going to react if he asks his son, did I stab you? Did I harm you? And he said, yes, daddy, you did this. Like, oh, no, nah, nah, he's not a genius. No, nah, I actually think he's crazy for, for trying to defend himself in this situation. Honestly, I do. Well, his name is Ronnie O'Neal, so he killed somebody before. Hey, man, ain't that super fly, Ron O'Neal? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I thought so. All right, um... I got I got to get the sister in here, man, because um, as a sister, when you look at the, the situation in totality, we have a, a woman dead, a daughter dead that could not speak, that had autism. We have a son testifying on the stand saying that his father stabbed him and his father saying that he loved his kids with all of his heart. What type of sickness is that? It's a mental illness and we suffer. We all suffer from it. You know, some more able to um, adhere and get help from it than others are. You know, who of us can say that I've not had thoughts that have led me to a place where I'm not comfortable with? I suffer mental illness. I'm sure my children, my husband, I'm sure we all have some type of mental illness that we don't deal with. And it comes from trauma. Like we are a people who suffer from a past that we do not relate to. We don't even know where we're from. We have no idea where we originate. So, you know, I know as a person, as a human, as a mother, that I have had negative thoughts that have led me to places where I didn't want to be. And if you're not able to accept those thoughts and able to get help for those thoughts, 
then you're not able to cure yourself. So this man is definitely mentally ill and a mental illness that may not be acceptable and may not be curable in our community because we're not able to accept where he's coming from. But he definitely has some type of illness that needs to be sought after. Because one, who wants to represent themselves? Who wants to talk about and relive the traumas of their past, of, what, of their present, what they're dealing with? Like this man is super mentally ill in my eyesight. I don't know what anybody else thinks, but I'm just like, dude, you can't do this. Chill out, relax. Like, let somebody else talk on your behalf because it's not looking good for you at this moment. Brother Fatir, with the testimony of the son, uh -huh. with both of these people saying, see, one thing about me, this is one of my sins. I say this on the show all the time. Mental health and physical health is needed in the black community. What do you say about mental health and physical health in the black community, bro. It's bad, brother, because we 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 so we believe in our open enemy. What they say, FDA and everything like this, it's poor. And um, I believe if you read How to Eat to Live One and Two by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, you will look young and so forth. You you shine like a diamond. I'm 51 years old, brother, and I, I feel like I'm 18 years old physically and mentally. Because I'm I'm studious and I follow the life giving teacher and honorable Elijah Muhammad of how to eat to live. Like I said, it's, it's it's sad that we keep on following what we've been taught as a slave. But when God came in July fourth, nineteen thirty, to resurrect us, He gave us a method of how to eat to live and stay away from cancerous foods: the navy bean, the navy bean pie, navy bean soup. But we 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 became we 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 have became we we have become the white man. We want to eat steak, lobster, shrimp, all that type of stuff, which, which is killing us because we don't we don't know what a shrimp is a cockroach. You see what I'm saying? And when you see a lot of us with big bellies and stuff, we full of excuse my expression, we are full of shit because we eat 24 seven. We eat like a concierge. We eat like a pig. You see what I'm saying? And we, when you defile the house of God, you are using deceptive intelligence and you become what you eat. So once you educate yourself and start to change your mindset and be like, okay, I know American way, they eat three meals a day, sometimes snacks in between. And that's why us black, the Asiatic black man, woman and child, we have we are starting to look like the white man with our backs all hunched, beer belly out of shape. We use we lose our beautiful physique that God has blessed us. That every human being that 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 is called mankind are trying to look like the original black man and the original woman because they know that we are God's people and they know that we shine and we are beautiful. So we have to. Um, Seek knowledge from the cradle to the grave, brother, to make yourself back to be a godly person, brother. And then you'll learn how to eat to live and you're, you're, it, it will reflect in, in your physique and your mental and your mentors, brother. Because look, I'm going to tell you, brother, I did seven and a half. I did seven years in the Navy. I'm an ex-Navy SEAL and the sister's right. All of us have a mental, some type of mental uh, disability. I wow. Have, I have wow. PTSD. I have PTSD, brother. I got it from being over Iraq because I was over in an envir in a, um, an environment that was it was an environment that was inhuman for me. Like being in prison, like the brother, me being in prison, that was inhuman for me. So that made me be like have a like PTSD, post traumatic distress, where you you weren't used to being in, in, in an environment like that, so you you had to adapt to that. You see what I'm saying? So psychologically, it mess with you. You see what I'm saying? But that don't mean that you're less than. It means that black people need to seek knowledge and don't be afraid to talk to a psychiatrist. It'll change your life. I'm telling you, it's, it's good for you, bro. We need some type of therapy. This is therapy right now with us talking right now, bro. That's members with a Z-M-O-P.